Hello, hello, and welcome back to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration. And here we are, back on the, on the, still on the space station. <laughs> I've been spending a lot of time up here recently. And at the moment, we're getting the, um, the Material Science Catalogues 2 being built. Here they're coming out, coming out at the bottom here. And um, this has been the, one of the more recent things I've built up, and certainly since the last episode. There's quite a lot that goes into this. Um, one of the more ridiculous things we were making is these, uh, I think it's called impact data. And this involves, as far as I can tell, using one of these mechanical um, facilities to ram a train into an iridium girder, which, which is, seems pretty crazy. Um, so that means I'm making locomotives up here. So we've got uh, making cogs, which are being made into small engines that we've made into big engines. Um, the cogs are going into all of these different stages. And then those are being made into locomotives as well. Um, I do only have one machine making cogs, but it does seem to be keeping up with absolutely everything. The limiting factor seems to be these um, big, mo big engines down here. But I've got more than enough locomotives coming out, so that's not a problem. I have quite a lot of them building up on this belt. It does look quite great. It, it does feel kind of silly that you can have um, a uh, loco. If you, if you get a locomotive out and sort of wave it around a bit, then it's this big. But when it's on a belt, it's only that size. But never mind. That's just sort of the, the scale of Factorio, I suppose. Let's put these back in here because I don't. I, I don't actually want them in my inventory. So yeah, we're making um, making locomotives, smashing them, smashing them into things. And the crazy, crazy thing about this is the sheer amount of um, scrap that's produced by um, that's output by this by this process. As you can see here, we produce one and a half thousand scrap for every every single time we run this um, this process now granted we produce 25 um, data cards from it as well so it it's not quite as ridiculous as it sounds but that's still um, 60 pieces of scrap for every data card we're producing and that seems like rather a lot so it's all going onto this belt here and that does seem to be just about able to cope it's, it's being fed up Along with uh, along with any other scrap that comes from this sort of area, um, into into here and then into the uh, in, onto, into the um, the scrap pickup uh, station here for the train to come along and, and load load up on it. So, yeah, and there's there's a lot of stuff being there's a lot of scrap being generated by this system, but it and the, the system seems to be coping with it. We are disposing of it fast enough, as far as I can tell. So that's as of course is, is being taken over as, as we've discussed before over to here where we've got these. Um, all these recycling machines that are turning it back into stone and ore which are then cooking into metals and just transporting all this stuff back off to be put back into the uh, into the system as you can see there's only a thousand stone in there and three thousand iron and one and a half thousand copper and that's because these stations are prioritized as you can see we've got the uh, the priority of a hundred on that one so the trains will come to these stations before they go to the rocket landing pads to pick up these particular resources so it all just gets churned back round and through the uh, through the system again let's see if we have a look at this um this one here yeah we're down to only 230 220 um scrap left in the station so it's it's being dealt with pretty um pretty rapidly uh, of course, we've got another. We'll just fill this one up back up to 2,000. Um, <laughs> oh, and this is filling up again already. I might need to lower the um, the wait time on this train. No, it's actually only at 30 seconds, and that's probably all right. I was thinking I could lower it a bit more so that the train goes quicker once, it's, uh, once it, rather than just sitting there as the as more of the contaminated scrap dribbles in. But I think actually that's probably all right. I'll, I'll just leave it as it is. So yeah, that's the first one of these. Um, it's being made out of all of the uh, out of all of this stuff. Then here, this is corrosion data. So we're, I, oh goodness knows what this is supposed to be. So we're bringing in um, glass and iridium and material science packs. I suppose we're probably squirting chemical gel onto the science packs and seeing if they dissolve. I, I don't know. But whatever it is, it produces again. It produces scrap. It produces contaminated water, and they all just get shipped off to the recycling plant and dealt with. Next one up, we have the. Uh, this is pressure data. So this is taking it. This this one takes in. Um, the t storage tanks for which we need um, iron and, uh, and iron and steel. So we've had a few more of the extra things coming in on the inputs. Make those up. Now the interesting thing about this one um, is where is it? Here it is. Is it takes in a thousand cosmic water and then spits nearly all of it back out again. So there's quite a lot being buffered in these machines, and then it just flows back around this pipe and goes straight back in again. I'm 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 not going to complain. It 
it works. It's uh, I, it, it, it's better than it uh, using all of that up every, every single time. So I'm, yeah, definitely not going to complain. At least it doesn't make it dirty. Um, and there's enough sort of storage space in the in the system for that to be dumped out and to flow around and go back in again. So that that works quite happily. Here, this one is what are we doing here? This one's rigidity data. So we're presumably trying to bend the um, the heavy girders. That's not too difficult. We're making the heavy girders here out of the iridium, and then I've put them onto onto the um, the bus here as well because there's quite there's sort of there's there's several things that use them, so it seemed like a good idea just to pass them pass them round and round, uh, pass them all the way down so everything can use them from from a single supply. Um, so all of that is then getting combined in these supercomputers, and we're turning it into these catalogs. Those flow off to a train, much as you'd expect, and we've now got a whole 562 of them. So it's kind of a slow process and you can see how slowly these things are coming through so this will keep chugging away until it gets up to 2000 and then a train will come and pick them up I think it's probably 2000 um, 40 stacks 500 yeah 2000 2000 then a train will come and take them away so that's going to be a while I might manually trigger a train I think at some point soon because um, actually, no. Before, before, before I say because in that in, in that meaningful tone of voice, I'll just hit, um, touch on the up here where we've um, added in a few extra um, systems for gathering in. Oh, this should be uh, that one. Um, a few extra resources being brought in, like the steel that's being used for the trains and things. And I think I ended up having to put in another drop-off station. Yes, I did. Uh, pulling in because we need green. Um, Green circuits, iron, and glass for the uh, for the sciences down here. So, so I've had to put in a second one of these stations, but you know, that's not a problem. Oh, and another fluid station for all the cosmic water that we're um, using to pressure test. So another thing I've done is put in this facility up here that's making the material science packs locally to the to this sort of this sort of facility. And the reason I'm doing this is because I noticed that trains were coming. It felt like I'd never had enough of them coming through here. But the trains just weren't bringing enough in, um, and this needs to be um, this needs to be combined onto both sides of the belt, so that as long as there's enough being made locally, we don't bring them in from externally. So I'll do this. There we go. Both sides of the belt. Now all of the ones that are used up by the science here are going to be brought from the from the new production facility up here, because it's it's far more efficient to bring the uh, the resources in and make them on site rather than bring them in by train and because you get through so many of them as a lot of the a lot of the data cards will take in four or five or six of these um of these cards like this this one takes in four of them for example um just to make the one site one data card on the output so you get through a lot of these material science packs and doing this will save them bring all being brought in from the station over, way over yonder and i think at some point I may well end up deconstructing this station because there's, I suspect either this is going to be able to keep up and, it's, and it is feeding them into a station here or alternatively perhaps this isn't going to be able to keep up in which case I'll have to expand it and then it will be able to keep up. So I think having this just being made in one place is probably going to be a bit neater and save space for other things and but the main thing is just making sure I don't have endless trains coming in here with material science packs in them and just un and un to, un to unload because it's getting silly. So the reason I was talking about uh, getting a train manually to come over here and grab these and bring them up is because another thing I've done is built out this system up here for um, producing the uh, the material science packs. And this hasn't actually been tested because I haven't had any um, catalog twos come in in order to allow me to make the insights, in order to allow me to make the science. Now I do have quite a bit of the significant data, as you can see, these gold card things, uh, and that's because they're being made here from the gr from the blue and the and the purple. But I want to upgrade these to using all three types. So let's head up there, and, and we'll get we'll get the, we'll uh, get that done because I think it's going to be at least reasonably interesting. <laughs> So I'm going to use one of my trains. I'm going to send it to Material Catalog 2 Pickup. And I want you to wait there for 30 seconds. Yes, that's fine. Then head up to what's well, called Bio Stuff because I haven't renamed it yet. So we'll send it to get, send it to there until empty. And so that, that train will not... Oops, I'll just fall off the world. That train... We'll head over here. Here it comes. 
and it'll pick up those sort of 500 and whatever, about 600 um, catalogs that are built up in, in these uh, in these chests, which isn't really. I mean, it, it's not enough to actually fill a train up. So, uh, which is why the train didn't trigger automatically. But I think it's interesting enough that I'm going to get going to get it to do it just manually. Okay, so we've got 622 in there. Train leaves. And then it can drop off those catalog twos, and that'll pass them around into the system, and that'll allow me to start making the um, insights here, because these are also these could have been set up to make make it just using the basic recipe just from the uh, the tier ones, but that seems like a waste. Um, it's, it's an inefficient way of doing it. So I want I want to do this the the more efficient way, and as soon as possible I'll get all of these upgraded to using tier threes and tier fours as well, and then they'll be even more efficient. And these can get then passed down here where they'll go up here to go to this machine, like that. And that can then grab a few in there. Okay, excellent. That's all. That's primed. Now these are starting to spit out the uh, the various bits and pieces. So I remembered almost too late, but just in time, that I needed to split out um, memory cards from here as well, so they get passed out separately. And they go down this chute, where they're fed onto this belt that takes them out to a station over here. I did notice I'd forgotten to configure this station, which is one of the reasons I was so low on memory cards. But now this is somewhere that can produce or provide them for the rest of the rest of everything everywhere. Okay, so that's now bringing those down here. That means I now need to reprogram these to do the. Oh, there's so many different ones. Uh, it's going to be this one. Yeah, this one. Blue, pink, and orange. that. Um, I've now picked up an enormous number of these insights that I don't want. I'll put them back into the machines. Okay, so now as the orange ones come in, they'll get snatched up as well. And so this means I'm now using a much more efficient recipe. So as I, I think I've covered this before, but there's the original recipe that you, you've got here. These four will just use one, um, one type of insight each, and they take in 36 and they produce four significant data. Then you upgrade to the, the second generation of, um, of systems, which take in 18 of each of the two and spit out six data. So it's still taking in 36, but instead of producing four data, it's producing six data, which is obviously 50% better. I've now moved on to the tier three, where you take in, still take in 36, but now you're producing eight. So it's producing twice as much as the tier one was. So it's yeah, obviously much, much better. And eventually I'll get enough that I can unlock the fourth level one, where it takes in all four of them and produces enormous quantities. Yeah, this one here, uh, where it yeah, takes in all four of them and produces, uh, let's have a look, 10 every single time. So so you're getting, again, more and more efficiency each time you do it. But to do that, there's some slightly tricky research is left to do yet. So uh, it's going to be a little way off, I think, before um, this particular one. The blue insights seem to be coming in kind of slowly. Um, it's got everything. Thing it needs all these machines are running maybe i just don't have enough computer maybe it, it, oh there's only four of them here where there's six of them here and six of them here i can presumably i presumably just want to come down and put another two in down here just to get this up to up to speed um that's going to be easy enough because there's all this space over here which i've deliberately left so this one can be expanded these ones can't really be expanded more than about i could probably fit another two in one, two, three. How wide are they? They're five wide. One, two, three, four. So I could fit five. I could put an extra one in by eliminating this space with the um, pylons, and I'll tell you how I'm going to do that in a minute. There's clearly room for another one here, so I reckon I could fit two, possibly three more in along here. Uh, any more than that would be a bit too, a bit too much of a squeeze. So the reason I can do that is one of the things I've developed recently and suddenly been able to start using is these these uh, pylon substations and these are amazing they've got the um, the cable range between them of the big power poles but then they've got a f but they cover the entire area between them as well so look at that coverage area that's fantastic so i've been starting to use these now on the newer builds and that was something i got from the um, from having um, energy science 2 this one so because of all of these science packs here i would and uh, no, those aren't the output. Yes, these are the output. Because all of these, except the ones that went down the chute to go off to be scienced, um, I've been able to start doing some more interesting researches. And so I've been I've been using a few of the uh, a few of the tier two science packs in order to do interesting stuff. Okay, so now as you can see, these these are all are they, they are running. We've got these um, little orange pots coming through, and that should mean as these now come up here. Yes, these machines have started running. And now, 
obviously it's backed up completely here um, because I don't have uh, any I don't have disposal routes for these uh, for these duff memory cards and all of the science packs I haven't got quite that far yet but it shows you that the system is in fact working we're making the science and also the memory cards and we're now making both of the uh, both of these material sciences so that's a good um, <laughs> halfway through the material sciences we've got two out of the four and now I'll just leave this to run and to back up with all of these inputs and because these are running now off the um, of all three of the sciences, they're producing more of the uh, more of the data, more of the um, significant data each time they run. So yeah, I'm um, very happy with that. I wonder if the time is the same on all of these. Thirty seconds, sixty seconds, hundred and twenty seconds. Okay, no. So this is now much much slower. <laughs> so I think I need to look into making faster computers and possibly consider putting in speed modules in these and maybe beaconing them up although I can't use I can't do beacons in space yet I need more research for that and perhaps just you know putting more more computers in I could loop this round and have it wiggle back and forth up here and have two, three, four, four, four rows of these in relatively easily so that's uh, an easy expansion to do I should I'll, I'll probably think about that uh, fairly soon Another thing I've done recently is I've got rocket science up and running so this is the this is the first and the most basic of the um, of the uh, space sciences uh, it's the one that I, I i had it running happily over here it was somewhere in this area that i've now ripped up and i'm, I'm still in the process of taking apart <laughs> but it was um it was important a lot of the researchers require it so if you look at a research like and let's pick this one for example wide area beacon it takes four of the norvian sciences it takes rocket science and then it takes the energy and then it takes one of the special space sciences this one again exactly the same uh except it's only three of the norvian sciences uh this one right stand right in the middle again the same but we've got here we've got two of the um two of the biological science packs and it's all these sort of all these sort of overlaps and things and the, that are the reason why i've um I've decided to do this as a sushi belt rather than trying to have any cunning way of switching and trying to work out what particular science packs I'm going to need at any time. So having this as a sushi just just works much more easily, I think. So I'm going to need a, there's a couple of things we need. Have we got actually got the? Why are these not running? That should be a, oh. It helps if you, it helps if you put out inserters down to take the um the finished products out of the. Uh, out of the assembly machines when they've been made. <laughs> oh, it's so easy just to miss out little details like that. Um, but fortunately, it's not too difficult to debug these things. So, oh dear, they're spitting out scrap as well. Okay, that's something else. I'm gonna, I, I had completely forgotten they were going to produce scrap. I'm, I've discovered I'm really, really bad at remembering to put in. Uh, to, I'm remembering to notice what additional outputs are produced by um, by any of my my, my recipes. So um, we'll get that um, fixed. Not right now, but I'll I'll, I'll do it between episodes. So I'm going to need to build another station, probably in the middle over here, to pick up the scrap and take it away. Uh, that's going to be quite. Well, that's going to be one of the long ones. But it's, but I don't think these are going to produce all that much scrap. But there we go. We're produ now producing a, at least a little bit of rocket science. So we've got there's our first 20 packs of it. So that's basically working. Um, I do need another station over here to unload the rocket science and put it in on this belt by the looks of it. Yeah, this seems to be where it goes in. So I'm going to have to squeeze that in somewhere, which is going to be interesting. But I, th but I don't think that should be too difficult. So I think that's everything I've been doing up here in space. We've got the, the rocket science, we've got the energy material science, um, actually, actually making the packs over there. Catalog 2 down here, letting me make those packs. Um, and that's... Oh, and I've ripped up a load more stuff over here. Now that's nearly it, in fact. I've done a little bit of stuff on Norvis. One of the things I've noticed is that we see, I seem to be running out of um, materials. As you may, you may have been seeing all these things pinging up while we were um, while I was doing the the, uh, the recording. I've got a lot of things I'm short of down here. So there's massive shortages of copper, essentially. I, I thought I had yeah, there's iron shortages as well. So at some point, I'm going to have to come back down here onto Norvis and set up some more copper mines I think um, I've noticed there's a massive copper patch over here okay I've got a railway line running through it but that's easy enough to, to move I can just have it kink up across like that uh, so there's a nice 10 million of it over here but if this is in un un unfriendly territory so I'm going to need to do a little bit of um, defensive work should we say um, 
in order to, to reclaim this ed, in order to get to get that being done safely. So I think what I'll have to do is bring my artillery train out to here, blow a load of biters up, out to here, blow a load of biters up, out to here, blow a load of biters up, and then probably to here as well. Then I can build another railway dropping down here and put in a, a wall across there. Or do I want to come down all the way down to here? I don't know. It's that thing, isn't it? I've, I've talked about this before. It's um, how much territory do I want to claim? Because the more of it I claim, the less wall I have to build and the more efficient my defences become. But on the flip side, the lo it, it takes longer to just churn through all of those biters. Maybe the answer is to stop using artillery and just to look into alternative methods of, um, of combat. So, for example, I've unlocked um, thruster suits too. But I have also unlocked power armor too. Are there any other? other? Let's have, let's have a quick look in the um, research for armors. Um, okay, there aren't any better armors, but I can make better. I can now make adaptive armor three. I can research adaptive armor four. Um, there are shields that I've never looked into because I haven't. I can't spell shield because I haven't been doing. I haven't been doing combat, so I can get that up to energy shield mark six. So if I get one of those, and I can't, I can't, I can't research that. I can certainly research energy shield one, two. Can't do three. I can get energy shield mark two, um, get those in my armor, and go out there and, and fight them. Um, and presumably, I can make personal laser defenses. Um, have I even researched? Yes, there they are. Personal laser defences. Get enough of those in in your armour and fly around with on a jetpack. And that might be quite an effective way of taking the biters out. So maybe that's worth playing with and give, ha having a shot. Um, one of the things I am going to need to do that, I suspect, is going to be the... Um, where is it? The the tier 2 generate, personal generator. Which I can't find. Which I can't find in there. Maybe it's got. It's probably got some sort of silly name. Let's have a look. In, let's have a look in here. Um, here we go. So I've got one of these in my in my uh, kit at the moment. Which um, I, so I've been able to make one of those. It's as you can see, none of those things are particularly difficult. That produces 300 kilowatts. This one produces 500 kilowatts, which actually isn't that much more. Um, it's less than twice, and it takes four of those and loads of exotic stuff that I've got up here. Um, I was going to make one of these because I've noticed my um, suit isn't recharging quickly enough when, I, when I'm when i using the bots, but I don't have any... Um, I've got everything I need up in space except for the... I can't make the uranium fuel cells because that needs um, uranium-238 and I don't have any of that in space. So that's being a bit... that's a bit of a problem. I'm going to have to... Um, so yeah, I'm going to have to get, come down to get some more of that. I tried ordering it um, but there isn't any of it on the on the or there isn't very much of it on the uh, on the available on the network. So I ordered 500. I got 60. So as you can see there, it's still 440 that I would like to have in order to, to go into this rocket um, that just isn't simply isn't available without going down there and finding it. I guess there it is, 60. Uh, so that's um, a little bit annoying, uh, but. But, isn't, but none of these things are insurmountable. I'm, I'll um, I'll get these sorted out again. We'll get everything up, up, up and flowing again fairly soon. So, plans for the future. Well, there's um, essentially I've now got there there are there are the four essentially there's the four different directions I can take science in um, or work on next. There's astro, energy, material, and biological. I haven't built up any biological yet. I've got um, material, astro, mechanic, um, mechanical. Material. Uh, biological is going to go in over here. I haven't done that one yet because I don't have a, um, a good supply of vitamelange coming in. So another thing on my to-do list is to go out to Tulip and build up a, a big processing facility for that. Um, I let on my last stream I let chat decide what I was going to do next, and they said I should do the. They, I should, they said I should do material too. So I did that. <laughs> Maybe if if they're around next time I'm playing, I'll ask them and ask them to vote again because it's a it's a, a good way of making somebody else's decision, somebody else's responsibility. <laughs> so we'll we'll see. Um, and there there is plenty of science to do with just the these three. So I don't really mind going in and doing going in and doing the third tiers of any of these. In fact, I think I have probably already researched them all. Oh, there's energy t energy three, biological two I did, um, and uh, astronomic two. I haven't oh I haven't done um, material three. Uh, I meant 
I meant three. It's because I've got two stripes on it. I keep forgetting to count the blob on the top of it. I haven't done material three yet because that needs material two. And as you've seen that, Sora, I've only just started making that, so I haven't had the chance to do that one yet. But yeah, they, they're um, then they're, they're not too far off. They're uh, definitely within my within my grasp. Um, there it is. Pack three. Material science pack three. Uh, so I need, yeah, okay, I need to research heavy bearings apparently and uh, material catalog three and then I can research it. So there's not really very much left to do before I can get that one. So it's going to be fairly easy once I've got the um, material science two. So there's plenty to do um, and plenty of different directions I can go in. Uh, so I guess the fun will be finding out which way I go. <laughs> tune in next time to see how I've done. Um, oh, tune in, that's an antiquated um, expression isn't it uh, so yeah join me next time to see, see what I've decided to be or what chat has decided will be the next thing I do or come along maybe over the weekend or next Wednesday and I'll um, and maybe you'll get to be uh, the one, one of the people to make help make the decision <laughs> thanks for watching I'll see you then